For our latest release, we have a new way to view the grid called Tile View. It's based on our card view, and we've designed it to look and feel like the new Windows tiles. Let's take a look at how to use this view with our grid. Here I have a project open. I've added our grid control and bound it to some employee data. As you can see, the information displayed in the grid doesn't look so good. I'll show you how to switch over to the new tile view and add our data. As you can see here, our grid control is set to grid view. I'll click here to change the view. Select Tile View. If I run the app now, you'll notice our tile view takes shape. But now we can't see any of our data. I'll show you how to do that next. First, I want to make each tile a bit bigger. So I'll go over to the Properties window and expand Options Tiles property. I'll set the Item Size property to 360 by 180 and the tile expands in uniform height and width accordingly. Next, click Run Designer. Here, I'll select the tile template, and this is where I'll add the data I want to show. The data is broken down into tile elements. Each element is capable of displaying an image and or text. I can add an element by clicking on the New Element button. You'll see the element appear in the tile preview. The Properties panel loads up, and here I can make all necessary changes to the element. This is an unbound element and has nothing to do with our bound data from the project. In order to add bound elements, just select the field you want and click the arrow to add it into our elements list. You can tell an element is bound to data with a little yellow glyph next to it. OK, I'll remove these elements and begin to build our new tiles. With Tile View, you only need to design one template tile and all tiles will fall into that template. So. Let's start by adding the photos of our employees. I'll set the image alignment to manual. Now I'll make some modifications to the properties. First, I'll set the image size to 180 by 250, and then set the image scale mode to zoom outside. You'll see here that the outlined area represents the image location and then set the image location coordinates to negative 20 by negative 30. This moves the top left corner accordingly and repositions the image. You can tell the center of the image by the small gray glyph, so our images will be placed approximately in this area here. Let's run this and take a look. And here's our employees' photos in tile view. Let's go back and add some text. We'll start by adding the basics, first name and last name. Next, I'll add an unbound element and name it title. Then, I'll add the bound title data to our card. Once aligned, the text will serve as a header to let the user know each employee's title information. Then, I'll create another unbound element and name it location. This will serve as a header for our employee's city and country. The city and country will be on the same line and separated with a comma. So I'll add another unbound element and label it as a comma. Now we'll position each text element around the title. And you can do that by setting the text alignment property to manual and then setting each element's location accordingly. When it comes to our city and country line, we want the comma to line up according to each different city's name. To do that, we'll use the anchor feature which allows you to attach elements to each other. So, I'll select the comma and set the anchor alignment to right. Then, I'll select the city as our anchor element. And I'll set the anchor indent to zero. This means that the comma will always appear just to the right of the last letter of the city name. Then I'll select the country and anchor it to the right of the comma. This time I'll set the indent to three so that there's a bit more space between the comma and country name. 
Once the items are anchored, all I have to do is set the location of the city and the comma and country follow suit. Let's run this and see how it looks with our data. And here you can see our tiles with pictures, names, titles, and locations. Now I'll show you how to change the appearance of the text so that they stand out from each other. In the Grid Designer's View section, you'll see the Appearance Item property. And if I expand the item, you'll see all of the different state's appearances as well. This property allows you to set global appearance settings common to all elements within the view. For this example, I'll set the font to Sego UI Semi Bold. Set the size to 10. And set bold to true. This will adjust all the text in my tile accordingly. I can adjust each text individually as well by selecting them as elements and making adjustments to each text's properties. I'll just go through here and set my first and last name elements to a larger size and make them a bright blue color. Then I'll set my title and location text to a lighter gray with the bound text darker. And if we run this now, you'll see how the changes we've made can help create a better looking tile. Now I'll show you how to add more rows. If we go back to Visual Studio and select the grid, we can make changes back in the Options Tiles property. Here I'll switch the row count from 1 to 3. And if I run this again, you'll see the changes are made. Now I'll show you a way you can group columns by certain data criteria. If I go back into my grids properties and expand column set, you'll see four options to choose from. Each affect the grids data depending on the field they're assigned to. So, for example, I can group columns based on the employee's countries. So now when we run it, we can see our tiles are separated between the UK and the USA. If I go back and select my country column, I can make specific adjustments to its appearance. For example, I'll expand its options column section and set the show caption property to true. Our grid will now show the country caption followed by a colon wherever our country elements are located. I'm going to switch gears a bit and show you some more cool features of the tile view. In this example, we're displaying homes that are for sale. As I mentioned before, the tile view has one template on which all the tiles are built from. But there might be times where you want to display different information for different tiles. So, in this example, we want to visually separate the houses that are sold. One way to do this would be to set the checked column property under the column set section. And if I run the app, you'll be able to see the sold homes by a transparent check mark located in the upper right corner. You can add the check mark and signify the home as being sold by right clicking on a specific tile. Another way is to select the tile and adjust its item customize event. This event fires each time a tile has to be displayed and it allows you to get the row handle of the corresponding data row. So it knows exactly which row of data it's associated with. In this example, I'm using the e.item elements to help change the properties of certain tiles. So here, we're changing the string format of the price of each home. Then we want to find each home that is sold and change its background color to gray. So now when I run the app, you can see all our tiles and the homes that are sold are set to gray cards. And that's it for this video on our tile view. 
For more information, please check out our documentation online. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress. Thank <laughs> you.